Morning guys, Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. I wanted to uh, start a little bit of a series this morning with you guys. Um, I've had tons and tons of requests over the last couple of years to do some reviews on what I consider bulletproof firearms for survivability and sustainability. And there's a little bit of a difference there. Survivability, you're looking for something you know that's very, very versatile that can shoot a lot of different types of ammunition, like the single shot 12 gauge that you can use adapters for, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in future reviews. But for long-term sustainability, if you've got a homestead or a cabin or something like that, then you may choose to have more than one firearm because you may want different firearms for different jobs. Obviously, the best tool for the job is going to be the tool that specifically functions for exactly what you need it for in that situation. So if you're out shooting big game, you want a rifle. If you're shooting over long distance, you want a rifle, not necessarily a shotgun. So we're going to talk about some of that. We're going to talk about rifles, pistols, shotguns, and things of that nature in this series. But I'm only going to talk about weapons that I think, A, are bulletproof, B, meet all the criteria that I would look at for any other tool. Because let's face it, a, a weapon is a tool. That's all it is. It's nothing more than another tool. It's an option for you to carry to help maintain your survivability or sustainability through the gathering of meat sources, unless it's for protection. That's another story altogether. For right now, what I want to talk about is sustainability in gathering meat sources. So the first gun that I want to talk about today is probably what I would consider one of the most bulletproof rifles that was ever created. It was used extensively in World War II. They're available at a common man price. You can buy them for under $100 in most cases. Um, and that is the Mosin Nagant, 7.62 by 54. Bear in mind, if you're not familiar with calibers, 7.62 basically is a 30 caliber round. 7.62 by 51 is NATO 308. 7.62 by 54 is more of a Russian round, but they are both 30 caliber rounds. They have a little bit different ballistics and things like that as far as trajectory, but the 7.62 by 54 is a very, very reliable long range round, and the Mosin Nagant is a bomb proof rifle. We're going to talk about that right now as far as the rifle and my setup of this rifle goes. Stay with me. Okay, so what you see here on the table would be what I would consider the carry items for a rifle like this. This is a Mosin Nagant. It's a carbine model. It has a few modifications to it that we should talk about. The first modification is it has a flash suppressor or a muzzle brake on the front end. Aftermarket price on this is about $30. It has a Monte Carlo stock and the bayonet has been removed. Monte Carlo stock aftermarket is about $60. I bought this weapon as you see it right now with the flash suppressor or muzzle brake and the Monte Carlo stock for $110 at a gun show. Now the one thing that I did replace on this was I replaced the bolt. The Mosin Nagant comes with a bolt that basically is straight. When you close it, the bolt sticks out straight just like this. This is a Mosin Nagant sniper rifle bolt and it has to go down because there's a scope on top of that gun. With this rifle you can now, it looks just like any other hunting rifle as long as you've got that different bolt in there. Now an aftermarket bolt for this, again that's why they're so great. You can buy this whole aftermarket bolt assembly for about $50. If you want the sniper version or the version with the bent bolt it's about $70. But I've seen some that have been welded on that are a little cheaper than that. So they've been cut and welded. This one's not cut and welded. This one's actually off of a Mosin Nagant sniper rifle, which is considerably longer than this rifle is. The other thing is it's got a slogan sling on it, which is a rubberized sling that breaks in half so you can backpack style carry it or you can carry it over your shoulder. But for heavier weapons like this rifle, it's really, really good because it grips onto your shoulder really well and keeps it from sliding off. I use these on almost all of my rifles and shotguns. So those are the things that I've done to this aftermarket or that have been done to it aftermarket. The bolt cost me, I think, $45. I caught this thing at a gun show and got it for $45. I've got two extra bolts for this rifle. Again, I don't want to mess with small parts. I want durability and long-term sustainability. I want easy maintainability. So 
if something goes wrong with this bolt, I'll set it aside for parts in a drop dead emergency, and I'll just put a brand new bolt in there that I've got set aside, and I'll and I'll roll with that. But other than that, there's not a whole lot can go can go wrong with this. Let's face it, most people, common man, normal people walking the streets, whatever the case may be, are not going to shoot a gun a thousand yards. I don't need to shoot this gun a thousand yards, but I may want to shoot it 300. It has adjustable sights, iron sights on it, out to a thousand yards. It shoots pretty flat out to over 200 yards. Once you get around three, you've got to adjust the sight a little bit. But it shoots good and flat, or it shoots very good trajectory out to 500 yards with no question, with iron sights. And that's important for me because I don't want to have to carry a scope. A scope becomes another piece of equipment that I have to maintain. If I don't spend a whole lot of money on one, I can just bang this against a tree and the scope's going to be off. If I don't have a really good mount, same situation. You could have two, three thousand dollars wrapped up in a scope and mount for a hundred dollar gun. That's ridiculous. I want something that's bomb proof. Iron sights are bomb proof. I can see plenty far enough at 300 yards to shoot anything without a scope. With just iron sights with this, no problem. <laughs> so here's the round. Again, 762 by 54. 54 millimeters cartridge length, 7.62 millimeters diameter, 30 caliber. But I can keep, you know, 30 rounds, 40 rounds in a waterproof Pelican box like this very easily and throw in my backpack, and I've got plenty of ammunition for gathering game. This is a 30 caliber cleaning kit that actually goes to a different type 30 caliber weapon. And it's just in a plastic box. It's got a chain cleaning rod that drops down inside of it a bore brush and chamber brush, oil, and a scrubbing brush. Very simple, easy kit to carry around with you. It doesn't take up a lot of room. You can throw that thing in the bottom of your backpack and you're good to go for cleaning your weapon on the fly. Spotting scope. If I'm going to have to shoot something that's going to be a long ways away and I want to take a really good look at it before I shoot it, I use a spotting scope. This spotting scope is a Leopold 20 by 50. I carry this instead of binoculars. All right, but this you know, is a really, really high-end spotting scope that I got really cheap because I bought it used and I bought it at a gun show. I bought this for $100. The, bot, the tripod is on it is just a, is just a uh, Light My Fire Ultrapod. If you go to their website, you can find it for about 20 bucks. I've been using this tripod on my cameras, on this spotting scope, and a lot of other things on my GoPros for probably three to four years, and I've never damaged or destroyed it. So it's a really, really good, solid, piece of equipment to carry in your pack and it doesn't weigh very much at all. So that would be the setup that I would carry for a 30 caliber type rifle. And the 7.62x54 Mosin Nagant is probably the most bulletproof rifle in my opinion that was ever made and that's what I'm after and something I'm going to use for long term sustainability. I want something that's bulletproof, that's very simple and that's easy to maintain and that's the key to it. You know it's a very simple mechanism. You pull the trigger to take out the bolt very easy to clean that. It has one clip on the bottom of the magazine that you push backwards that opens up the magazine well so you can clean that. And obviously you've got a cleaning kit to clean your bore and your uh, barrel. It's just too simple. There is nothing to maintaining this type of rifle at all. It's very, very simple. And that's what I like about it. So we're going to continue with this series and talk about a few other firearms that I think are good firearms. Not all of them are necessarily as bulletproof as the Mosin Nagant. But as far as a rifle goes, for long range shooting or longer range, medium range shooting, three to 500 yards, I would consider the Mosin Nagant the best common man rifle for the money, bar none. Okay guys, well I'm Dave Canberra at the Pathfinder School. I appreciate you joining me for this review of the Mosin Nagant. I had a lot of requests to get this video back up. It is in the virtual classroom, the original review. This one's a little bit more detailed. Um, I'm going to do a few other reviews, like I said, on some firearms because I've been getting a lot of requests about that. They're all going to be, you know, common man type stuff for the most part. So I'm not going to do, you know, fancy pants stuff on expensive firearms because it's ridiculous. You don't need to spend a lot of money on a firearm. It's just like a bow. It's all in the shooter. It's less in the firearm. As long as you got something that's easy to maintain, that's very durable, easy to get ammunition for, and cheap, as long as it's bulletproof, that's what I'm all about. I'm Dave Canberra at the Pathfinder School. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I appreciate everything you do for me, for my school, for my family. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can.